great to have you worshiping with us today. I just want to let you know we'll get to service here in just a minute, but we have online hosts waiting to hear from you in the comments. So be sure and let us know where you're watching from. Answer any questions that might come up in the sermon. If something stands out, be sure and put that in the comments. We want to hear from you. Even if you're watching on the replay, still take part in those comments. And if this is your first time worshiping with us, we are so happy to have you. Be sure and let us know that this is your first time so we can drop a ping pong ball in one of these containers. These containers represent four of our mission partners and each ping pong ball is a $5 donation. That's what we do whenever we have a new guest. So be sure and let us know if this is your first time or if you're relatively new, maybe you've been coming for a while, but we haven't dropped a ping pong ball in for you yet, be sure and let us know. And now let's head into service. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong, yes, Jesus loves me. His name is 
church. I have a call to worship this morning. Uh, it'll be one that you are familiar with. It's the triumphal entry out of uh, Mark uh, chapter 11 verses 1 through 10. What I want to encourage you to do though, sometime look up in a study Bible or whatever, read those words and find out the meaning of what this truly says. It is quite fascinating how everything gets tied together in these verses. So I want to ask you as I get ready to read this, if you're able to, would you please stand for this call to worship? As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. It's the word of God for the people of God. Church, we're going to sing now the song, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, verses 1, 3, and 5. If you would like to use a hymnal, you can find that in front of you, and it will be on page 280. Let's sing together.
church, please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. All the information you can find or you need for this week, you can find by scanning the QR code in front of you if you're here in person or on the screen or visiting our website, tipcitygmc.org forward slash info. Now, if this is your first time worshiping with us or you've been coming here for a while and you'd like some more information about the church, uh, you've got a couple options. Go to the website and hit the welcome button. Uh, text the word welcome to 937 451 3539, or stop out at the welcome desk, that's the big long desk in front of the red wall here on this side, uh, out in the gathering area, and, and connect with someone. Any of these uh, will open up a line of communication between you and us, and we can, you can ask us questions about the church, and we can help you figure out if this is the right place for you. In addition to this, if you go through any of these steps, we'll make a $5 donation uh, to the mission partner of your choice. Uh, for attendance, if you're here, please sign the red pads in the back of the sanctuary, scan the QR code, go to the website, tipcitygmc.org forward slash info, and click the here button. We want to make you aware that we have new daily devotionals available. There's a couple ways you can uh, access these. They're outside. If you're right, right, go out, out here in the sanctuary, go to the right. There's a table on the right, right as you go outside there. Or you can go online, it has information, again, tipcitygmc.org forward slash info, and it'll tell you how to get the app. So as Pastor Bonita mentioned, this is her last, I'm going to call it official sermon, because you never know, you might come back, right? Um, and we will be celebrating today, you know, her ministry that, that she's blessed us with over the years. But we we're going through the video archives, and we found this, this gem. Uh, now... The, the quality is a little grainy. It makes me think I was five years old, but I was actually in my 20s when it happened. So let, let's roll the let's roll the clip. <laughs> If you have questions, as I do, um, come back today, 3 to 5 o'clock. We've got an open house celebrating Pastor Benita. Please come back. It'll be out in the Great Hall. We'll have a great time. Now it's time for our tithes and offerings.
I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. That's just a lesson to all of you. Once on the website, forever on the web, okay? We were actually celebrating burning our mortgage that evening, and Pastor Chris Farmer was the pastor here, lead pastor here at that time, and um, that was quite the experience. Peg Haddon made the beautiful costumes for us, though. So I would do a cartwheel for you now, but that just seems a bit much, especially since I was, I think, 20 years younger. So... <laughs> As we go to the Lord in prayer today, let's remember Diane Cheney. She has been struggling and has been at Upper Valley Medical Center. Um, continue to keep her in your prayers. She is making progress. Can I get an amen up there, Patty? Is she still making? Okay. She's still making progress. Um, so we just continue to lift her in prayer. Um, I want to thank all of you who contributed to the book that the staff gave to me last week. Um, it sent, apparently you sent in some kind thoughts about me, and I thank you for all of them. The book is out on the welcome desk, if you would like to look through it, and then I'm taking it home with me so that I can keep that. But thank you all so much for that. 
Um, are there any other prayer requests we would like lifted up? Just shout out the name of the people. For all of you who dressed in Bengals colors, who day? Thank you for that this Sunday. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you hear all the requests that we have put before you, and you know their need. We thank you that we can come to you, that you love us, and that even if we come to you weary and broken, or we come to you rejoicing, we come to you because we know you are our strong foundation. And so we pray today, Father, as your Son taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, after watching that video, that's the one thing I, I loved about my Nita. Some kids just never grow up. And, uh, <laughs> and if you would be in some of our meetings as we're getting ready for church service, we digress quite a bit, so it is fun. Um, as we get ready for the message this morning, we're going to sing the song, Breathe On Me, Breath of God, uh, page 420, if you would like to use that. Would you please stand? <laughs> Please be seated. Well, when I started here January 1st of 2006, I had my children and my siblings all here and um, cheering me on. My mother at the time had cancer. She only heard me preach from here one time. She came on Ash Wednesday. And uh, today, my son, my brother, watched from heaven. But his son and my niece and my nephew came all the way from New Madison. So thank you, Jake and Rachel. I appreciate that. Well, as Christians today, we get to celebrate. It's Palm Sunday. And each year, as the begin this is the beginning of Holy Week. And as you heard Mark read from the passage already, this is the day, according to the Gospels, that Jesus came to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. And he entered the city riding a donkey. 
He was greeted by a crowd acclaiming him by waving palm branches and laying cloaks on the ground to honor him. That's how they would do it to a conquering general coming into a city. And this is what they did for Jesus on this day. And they shouted, Hosanna. And it was a wonderful celebration. It was a celebration of Jesus. The week began with this great celebration. But it didn't end that way, did it? Or does it? You see, by the end of the week, well, Friday actually, Jesus will be arrested, he'll be beaten, mocked, crucified, and buried. But that isn't where Jesus stays. You see, everyone thought Friday was the end of Jesus. And they didn't know what to do. But Sunday was a coming. This week ends in the greatest celebration. Because Jesus will conquer death and the grave and be resurrected. However, we're going to learn more about that day next Sunday when I hope you will join us at 9 o'clock and 1030 as we celebrate Easter. As we celebrate this wonderful resurrection of our Lord and Savior. So come and join us. It'll be a great Sunday and I want to celebrate it with all of you. During this week, however, that Jesus has entered Jerusalem, he will do many things before he is crucified. And one of them is he will be in the upper room with his disciples, and they will be sharing in a Last Supper. And so we're going to also celebrate that day. We call it Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday. And we're going to celebrate it Thursday of this week right here at 7 o'clock. And we too will celebrate that with the Lord's Supper. So come and join us for that as we begin and end this week in such celebration. But during the last few weeks of this Lenten season, here at the church, we have been focusing on what is known as the Upper Room Discourse. It's the prayer that Jesus prays for his disciples when they're gathered in the Upper Room, when they're sharing that Last Supper. And this, ver this passage of Scripture is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 17. Now, our, our word for this Sunday from this passage is reunited. Come for me. And today I want to look at the last three verses of this prayer and see how we are reunited in Christ and how he will indeed come for all of us again one day. So turn with me in your Bibles or on your phones, your phone apps to John 17, beginning with verse 24. Jesus prays this prayer for the disciples, but here's the deal. He's also praying this for all believers throughout time. He's praying this for his disciples who are right there with him, who he has spent the last three years with. But he's praying this prayer clear up to today for you and for me. And before I read those verses, I just want to point out a few things. Jesus, who has spent the last three years with his disciples, has been trying to teach them everything. He wants them to understand. And he wants them to understand it so they can carry on with the message before Jesus goes to this cross and is crucified. He's preached to them. He's taught them. He's lived with them. He's laughed with them. He's scolded them. And he hasn't sugarcoated anything. He has told them things like, the world will hate you. You'll find that in John 16, In this world, you will have trouble. Can I get an amen? amen? But take heart. I have overcome the world. But he's also given them encouragement as well. And in many, many different ways. I read to you before the service started from Matthew 28. Verse 20 says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He is always with us. He's told them to love one another. And he has demonstrated that servant-hearted love over and over and over again. Even in the upper room when he washes their dirty, muddy feet. And he tells them to do likewise for others. He's told them to love and to serve one another, to be united. And he has told them that he's going away that another would come to be with them, the Helper, the Holy Spirit. He's told them that even though he will be leaving them physically, he will come for them again. Now, before he's crucified, they just don't quite catch that. And in this, his last week, 
Jesus intimately prays for his disciples, that prayer in John 17. He prays specifically that the Father would answer some of the requests that he asks for these weary disciples, for these disciples who can often feel alone. Have you ever felt that way? You love Jesus, amen? Amen. But do you get weary? Do you sometimes feel alone? Sometimes wonder, where is Jesus? Well, his disciples felt that way too. He prayed, Jesus prayed, that his Father would keep them secure. He's prayed that his Father would set them apart for their mission, that he'd make them holy. And he's prayed that they would be united. And now, now we come to the final part of his prayer, some of the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples. But again, I want you to understand as I read these last few verses, Jesus has done all of this for his disciples, but he has done all of this for you and for me as well. So what are the final things in his heart before he physically leaves? What are the final things he wants for us while he is gone from us? Listen to these words. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me before, because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Now, as I read this passage, I'm reminded of when sometimes we tell somebody goodbye who's maybe going on an extended vacation. I try to get you guys to take me with you when you do that, but you don't. So, you know, there's times you say goodbye or when a loved one is getting ready to leave. And you don't really say goodbye, do you? You say things like, well, I'll see you later, or I'll see you in a little while. Even if they're leaving this earth physically, if they know Jesus and you know Jesus, you say, I'll see you in a little while. Soon. That's what my pastor told me. Soon. I've even said that before at funerals that I have done, because we are counting on being reunited at some point. This is the reality that we get to hear in Jesus' prayer as well. He is saying that this is not the final goodbye. He fully expects that there will be a time where he is reunited with the ones that he loves. For the disciples, they would get to see him again. For those of us who have never seen Jesus face to face, there will come a time where we will actually, for the first time, Get to see him face to face. If I can't get a hallelujah out of that, I don't know what can. That's such a sad one, Missy. Hallelujah. <laughs> she can even sign it and say it. Come on, guys. But according to this passage, apparently, and here's the best part of this, Jesus wants this to happen. Jesus desires to see you and me Face to face. That's what he's praying. Now, there's several uh, passages in scripture, such as Psalm 17 and 1 John 3, where it speaks of us seeing Jesus face to face. But according to this passage, Jesus not only wants, but he prays to the Father that he would see us, that we would be with him. So as Jesus enters Jerusalem, knowing that he's going to go to the cross and just A few days' time, he leaves his disciples and us today with two final encouragements. The first one, Jesus desires that we would be with him in heaven. Listen to verse 24 again. Father, I want, desire, those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me, Because you loved me before the creation of the world. This request impacts our present experience, but it also impacts our future hope. In the present, 
Today, we get to unite with Christ in God the Father. But in the future, we will be with Christ in eternal glory and enjoy with him the love he experienced with the Father forever. Jesus' final request in this prayer is to the Father for us to be with him and to see him as glorious and without limitations. Now here's the truth of that. We limit Jesus, sadly, but we limit him with our human limitations, with our human thinking, because we can't think that glorious and that big and that amazing with our human limitations. In different translations, you will see the word desire used instead of want. That word desire, think about what you desire. Because that's different from what you just want. What you desire, that is the heart of you. That is the heart of Jesus. Jesus literally prays about the deep want of his heart. Not our heart, but his. And that want, that desire, is he wants to be with you and me someday. Not just that we want heaven, but he wants us in heaven. That is a magnificent basis for our hope of heaven. And yet the truth is heaven is only heaven because we will be with Christ. Heaven is more a person than a place, isn't it? Say yes. This is the hope of every believer, that one day we will be with Jesus. Paul says it this way in 2 Corinthians. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. In many places, scripture brings that hope before us. The joy of the Christian is that heaven is that in heaven we behold the glory of Jesus, the face of Jesus, the manifestation of all the glory that is in him. Now I want that great truth to sink in for just a moment. The joy of the Christian is that in heaven we behold the glory of Jesus, the face of Jesus the manifestation of all the glory that is in him. And as that sinks in, let me ask you, how often do you think of heaven? I think we often picture Jesus as the man who came to earth. Can you put that picture up again, Rachel, the, of Jesus on the donkey? The man who rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, the man who bled and died on a cross, we see Jesus in the flesh, even though we've never actually seen him. I think it's easier to just live in the physical world, our physical life, than to seek a relationship, to seek to build a relationship with an absolutely invisible, invisible entity. We see our human limitations again. So we don't give heaven much thought, I don't think, except that we will one day be there, and we look forward to that, but we don't really think about the glory of Jesus. Now I confess, this past year or so, I have given heaven a great deal of thought. Now that my son and my brother reside there, I have read books on heaven. I've read what the Bible says about heaven. I've spent time trying to picture, as best as I humanly can, what it must be like for those who are there. But because I'm a Christian, I'm still a sin-filled Christian, I'm sure that I don't do half of it justice. I don't even know what now that glory could look like. I don't know what it must really be like for those who are there and get to see Jesus without limitations in all his glory. But I try to picture that for my boy. There's a song that I'm sure you've heard that we, in fact, at 1030, we're going to sing it called, I Can Only Imagine. And part of the lyrics say this, I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side, what my eyes would see when your face, Jesus' face is before me, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart fill? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or do cartwheels, or in all of you be still? 
Will I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, the holy sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. One day you and I will see all the reasons why God did everything. We'll see all the Old Testament prophecies, all the New Testament promises, and we'll see that they are all realized in Christ Jesus. We will see how through trials and longings in our life, joys and celebrations, Jesus was always faithful to us, always. We will understand the true depths of our sins and the true love of Jesus. Love that took him to the earth and then to a cross so that he could defeat death and the grave so that we could be with him forever in, our, in his glory. We will understand his patience when time and time again we turn away from him or we don't think of him or we blame God for the things that truly are of Satan. We will understand his power. We'll understand his authority, authority that can do anything, but always only does what is best for us, even if we don't understand it. We'll understand his mercy. We'll perfectly understand his wrath, and we'll perfectly understand his joy, his love, and his peace, and his glory. Amen? Amen. It is a great hope. In the scriptures, we are not told a lot about heaven, just enough to make us want to be there. But the hope set forth for us is that we will be with Jesus to behold his glory in answer to this prayer. That second encouragement, Jesus continues to make the Father known to us on earth. Jesus continues to make the Father known to us on earth. Look at those last two verses. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. The good news is we don't have to wait for heaven. There is, in a sense, which this prayer is being prayed that is answered right now, today. I think our Lord intended it this way. For in the Spirit, we are able right now to behold some of the glory of Jesus. And it is this vision of that glory, of who Jesus is, that changes us, transforms us. Jesus calls God righteous Father because God's righteous judgment reveals the world's knowledge of God is incorrect. And Jesus shows the disciples and us the correct knowledge. Jesus is the living connection between the lost world and his loving, righteous Father. The world misses this connection, but those who love Jesus, we, we don't miss that connection. If you watch the news and any national tragedy, you will hear all sorts of people questioning God. Maybe you yourself even have before you had the knowledge of God's love through Christ. Why? Why did God do this? Jesus knows the true character of the Father, and Jesus has made the true character of the Father known to us. And he continues to make it known so that our knowledge deepens and that our trust and love deepen as well. As we understand the love of God for us more and more, we are strengthened in our faith. It is why Jesus who understands the Father's love completely and correctly, was able to enter Jerusalem on that donkey, even knowing that a cross was waiting for him. God is the righteous Father, and he can only do what is right and good for all of us, including his own son. Last week, Pastor Dan shared with us the story of Johnny Erickson Tata, who became a quadriplegic at the age of 17. Johnny is an author, a painter, a tremendous Christian speaker. And in a conversation with her husband, they talked about splashes of hell and splashes of heaven. Now, I think we all get splashes of hell. We understand that. Amen? We've all been there in one form or another. 
But those splashes of heaven, those splashes of Jesus' glory, as I call them, we can miss them if we're not looking for them. If we buy into the world's belief of God and not what Jesus is telling us, showing us, we can believe those splashes of hell. So let me just get this Bible and tell you, you want to see what those splashes of glory are? Those splashes of heaven? Jesus told us, Jesus showed us, this is a love story for you and me. When you pray, you get to talk to Jesus, to God. And Jesus intercedes with us as well. Those glimpses can be when you hold a beautiful brand new baby and all of heaven's love is in that kid. Or when you sit at the hospital with someone so they know they're not alone in their struggle. Or as you read a Bible passage and a word jumps from the pages to speak directly to your heart. To remind you of God's great love for you. Not for others, but for you. I believe it's easier to see those glimpses of glory in the midst of trials and difficulties. So that we don't lose heart and we are strengthened by God's great love for us. In fact, Jesus' desire is that you would understand the love of God even more as you go through those trials. When my son went home to heaven, my world was shattered and my heart was irreparably broken. But for God. Repeat that whenever you're in the depths of brokenness. But for God. People have asked me if I'm angry with God. Why would I be angry with a God who loved my boy so much? as much as he loves his own son, that when the time was right, not my time, but when the time was right, he took him home to live in the forever glory of Jesus. And I try to picture that for my boy. And make no mistake, I will miss him forever. But he was whole, would never be whole here on earth, and he's whole in heaven. And on my saddest day, I think of him living in that glory, of Jesus walking with him, holding him, of that glory surrounding my boy. And you could get a little mad and go, man, I should have seen that first. But he does. He gets to experience that. And that doesn't make me angry. That gives me strength. And it encourages me. And I hope it encourages you to share the love of Jesus with as many others as you possibly can. You see, I am greedy, and I want y'all in heaven with me. I want heaven crowded. Yes, Joe, even you. I want you in heaven with me. But until then, as weary as this journey may sometimes make us, Jesus continues to make the love of God known to us. And in so doing, he strengthens our faith to continue onward. So pick the trial you're going through. Jesus' Holy Spirit has been given to you so that you would know the faithfulness of God to you and know how much he loves you. Look for those splashes of glory in your trial. The work of the Holy Spirit in us will continue to teach us about the Father, his character, and his love for us. What a gift the Holy Spirit is for us. What an amazingly wonderful gift. Jesus, while he was on the earth, received strength by understanding that the Father loved him and he knew the character, the heart of his Father. And that is what gave him strength and the same thing is intended to give us strength. Paul tells us that we are now seated with Christ in the heavenly places. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. The more we see and behold the glory of Jesus, the more we are being made like him, even though we may not be aware the change is taking place. So what is this glory? Look again at verse 26. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. The glory of Jesus is the glory of love, the love of God for all people. This is what grips our hearts and changes our lives and makes us different people, forgives our sins, lifts us up again, and encourages our hearts. It is the realization that God indeed loves us as he loves Jesus, 
his own son. And I don't know about you, but for me, I've been through enough to know he'll be enough for me until I'm home again, reunited with Jesus and all my loved ones, and I get to see Jesus in all his spectacular glory. As we close this morning, my prayer is that someone here or watching online would open their heart and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior for the first time because they see Jesus' love for them and they see the Father's love for all his children. And if you are a believer, my prayer is while you may be weary, faint-hearted, or sorrowful, that you would hear the Father, hear the Son, communicate their desire to be with you in glory. This isn't just some life that we live where they don't care. The Son desires for you to be reunited with him, and he's going to make sure that you are cared for while on this journey by giving you the Holy Spirit to help you continue to make God's love known to you and for you to make it known to others. John Milton, an English poet in the 1600s, wrote, The end of all knowledge is to know God, and out of that knowledge, to love and imitate him. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to invite Mark to come on up and sing as the kids come in waving palm branches. Y'all stay seated and be blessed by our kids. Uh, we're going to do the first and last verse of Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, if you'd like a hymnal to use, page 278. And as Bonita said, please remain seated. Let's sing.
so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. So I'm going to come down to this then because Michaela and Chloe, Chloe's my granddaughter, as is this one right here, but they were little like you guys when I first came here, and now she's in college, and she's going to give me my first great grandbaby here in the summer. So thank you guys. You know what? Do you guys know how to sing Jesus Loves Me? Yeah? You know that song? Do you guys know that song? Okay. Well, I'm going to let you guys stand up and help us sing that. And then Jesse can help the kids go out after they sing a little bit of it with me. Because it's my favorite song. Okay? Are you ready? Sing it loud. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yeah. Thank all of you, not just for today, but I thank you for all of it. I love you, I love you, I love you. If I have a refrigerator, wait, I do, I have two. So I can put all your pictures on the refrigerators because I love you that much. But know that Jesus also has your picture on his refrigerator. Pray with me one more time. Lord Jesus, I am struck by the fact that we can talk to you and you talk to us the one who prayed for us. To the Father, this wonderful prayer we read in John 17. Lord, I am asking that you would communicate this encouragement to our hearts, that you would communicate this encouragement in order to strengthen us, fortify us, and make us strong. I know that there are people all over this room and watching online that feel very weak, physically, emotionally, even spiritually this morning. Communicate the love of the Father. Communicate your love to their hearts this morning. Strengthen them. Give them a focus on heaven. Give them a focus on your glory. Father, make us to open our Bibles this week. Help us to go to the source of knowledge. Let us meditate on who you are, what you want. Help us know you more. Lord, let this church know you more. Not know things about you more, but actually know you more so that it changes our heart, changes who we are, gives us new longings, greater longings for you. Lord, make this world so unattractive to us because we know you and want to be with you as well. Let us be known for wanting heaven. Help us to think more about heaven and your son's glory. We ask all of this in your son's holy and precious name. And Father, I thank you. I thank you for letting me share in the joy and the love of this church for so many years and in the love and the encouragement and the fellowship of all of these who have encouraged me, strengthened me, and blessed me in so many ways. What a lucky person I am. Thank you, Father. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week with God. Amen.